everyone, welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Modelcraft bench and a little quick look review of this Wingsy Kits BF109 E3 Messerschmitt uh, 109 ML variant. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the 109 and yet I seem to have built so many of them and I have so many in the stash. Uh, so really the last thing I thought I might buy at a recent visit to a model show was another 109 and yet here it is. Um, now, I showed you this kit in a chatterbox and I did say I would do some research on Wingsy before I did the review, so I've just googled Wingsy on my phone. And I can tell you this, that Wingsy is a Ukrainian manufacturer, uh, founded in Ukraine in 2016. They use short-run technology but with a modern approach to design and prototyping which allows them to, to achieve a very high quality. Uh, their main goal is to offer the world the most rewarding modelling experience possible. Now, at the moment, the range consists of um, a Claude, a Sonia, and the 109s in various different boxings uh, and types. Here's the here's the Wingsy website. So you can see you've got the I Imperial Japanese Navy Type 96, the Imperial Japanese Army type 99, three boxings of each and six boxings of the 109E in various different variants. So I picked up the E3 Alpha and this is the Swiss boxing. Um, I can't resist the Swiss markings honestly but really whilst the box art made me pick up the box what made me buy the kit was what is inside. Now, I got this from Andy Hills's antics stand at the Avon show recently. Prices you can see it's got 34.99 and 32 on there. He did do me a slight discount, so thank you hugely to him for that. Um, so I'm going to assume that you can pick this up for somewhere between 30 and 35 pounds in the UK. The top of the box is a simple slip-off box lid, and then you've got your sturdy Ukrainian brown cardboard box inside, just like. Oh, I see him and it's a Vesda do. I know it's a Vesda in Russia before you comment. And here's what you get inside. As you can see, the box is broadly speaking probably about twice as big as it needs to be. But I'm sure they've just ordered in a bunch of this size of box. Sprue packs, accessory pack, transparencies and some documentation. So let us begin with the sprues. I have not yet had these out of the packets so I've not looked at them properly closely yet so I'll discover them together. I'll don my scientist glasses and let's begin with this pack. I think that says A5-12 on there someone's written that with a pen and it's a Ziploc bag which I like. They're easy to open, they're reclosable, no scratchy staples no stupid impossible sticky things so what we got here some wings and some pieces and bits let's look at the wings first there so upper surfaces the thing that hit me looking at these parts through the plastic bags was the astonishing surface detail and the finish it's absolutely beautiful it's a lot like Edward or Special Hobby putting out now. There's no effort here to make raised detail, but what they have done is it's recessed and it's really, really nicely done. Now, the short run side of things is showing through in that there is a little bit of edge flash here and there, a little sort of stubettes coming off the parts. But nothing, there's nothing here that's that's going to cause an issue, I don't think. You can very clearly see as well on the inside the machining marks where the moulds have been cut which is completely irrelevant but it's something I enjoy looking at In inside halves of the tail planes are completely flat across their whole width and hopefully that what appears to be a shrunken edge is actually just an optical illusion because that will cause a whole lot of sanding if it's not I can see what I mean there so it looks as though the leading edge of the part has sort of shrunk down from the centre and if that is the case there is an inevitable gap will form on the leading edge but it doesn't feel 
like it tips away and all. So that's the upper ring halves. Little insert there. Presumably for a cannon bulge or something similar. Lower half, full span. Moulded in dihedral radiator baths. We've got our sort of flapper on things here. Separate. And again, just gorgeous surface detail. And again, it is all recessed, and I'll bring that up. You can see it. It's all just really beautifully fine and very, very nicely done as well. And the third one out of that pack is these detailed pieces. So we've got the this is the lower part that goes onto the flap there, which also forms the door on the back of the radiator bath. We've got only carriage um, leg doors. We've got the wheels. There's no flap moulded into these. Um, not surprisingly, I suppose, but 109 wheels with their extraordinary angles are a bit of a pain to get flat sanded into, to be honest. It's like a spinner back plate, an engine front plate, internal bulkheads and such these look like the panels for the wings got cannon barrels trim wheels control stick it's all gorgeous the details on these are absolutely lovely I'll bring you up and look at this wheel it's it's delightful for an injection molded kit part that's absolutely lovely and again with the control column it's gorgeous that's those parts then in the second bag also appears to say a S12 or 512 and also has three sprues in it. Quite a lot of parts here. So on this one, ailerons, very very subtle fabric effect on there and the rudder this is, is the same. The struts for tower plane braces, it got exhausts, Radiator grills, propeller obviously, and elevators, and you've got your cow mounted machine guns there. The exhausts are not hollow, as you can see there, and they're undercarriage legs, which look to be very nicely moulded and very nicely detailed actually, but with very minimal mounting po points for both the wheel and the leg itself. Could be a tad spindly. Propeller hub also, some really, really lovely detail on the part where it hits the blades, which is nice because that is somewhat visible on the 109, particularly these early models. <coughs> okay, next up, more small parts, more radiator grills, cockpit parts, spinners, a plethora of spinners. We've got four different spinners to choose from cockpit side panels, instrument panel an engine block there what looks to be again lovely detail very fine very small tire wheels are tad blank I'll show you that in a second uh, and the wheel well pieces here spinners are very nice got some nice sort of fastener detail around them the nose cone areas there's your cockpit floor but weirdly the tail wheel the hub is really not well defined there, which is a pity. That's going to be super awkward to scribe it out. A bit of fruity stretch, stretch sprue there. And the last one contains our fuselage halves. Engine top cowl and engine lower cowl. It's a different type of control column there. And our side mounted oil cooler and again the, the, the moulded in it's all recessed detail it's, it's glorious this looks if it didn't say wingsy kits on that tab and if it wasn't obviously a relatively short run technology sort of sprue system I, I think you'd swear blind this was an Edward kit that's how good this is 
It's absolutely delightful. Really, really lovely stuff. So that's all the plastic parts apart from the canopies. This one's also got 12 written on it and we just have a basic set of canopies here. Not a, there isn't a myriad of options. You got the early rounded corner hood with the matching windscreen, an armoured glass part to put inside the windscreen and a gun sight. Canopy frames are quite sharply defined and the transparent parts themselves are creditably smooth to look through. They're very very good, they're probably not... I don't want to sound like I'm being critical because I'm not, they're, at, they're, at, they're very very decent but the best the best of the best out there are better than this, without a doubt. Um, the likes of Airfix and Edward are probably a touch better than this, but they're certainly not bad. Cue all the comments from people saying Airfix transparencies aren't good, whatever are you talking about. <laughs> Alright, now accessory packet has, what have we got here? An enormous Ziploc bag. Kudos points to anybody who knows where I'm getting the phrase accessory packet from. Which channel do I watch? Alright, so we've got here a little a little fret of photo etch parts. It's got wingsy kits written on the bottom, so it's probably not produced by Edward. No, it's manufactured by Metallic Details, it says it here on the left. Metallic Details also do a beautiful little fret photo etch for C-130s. So I've got no complaints with that. So what we have here, we seem to have a few boxes. There's the, what looks like the armour plate for the oh, canopy. This piece probably wraps around that oxygen canister that goes inside. And we obviously have a harness there as well. It's a relatively complete photo etch fret for one that's included, but no instrument panel and it is not in colour. Pop that back in there. Mask as well. Looks to be just for the canopy, and these are the vinyl type masks, like uh, Montex, for instance, used to be, probably still are. Absolutely nothing wrong with these, especially in the context of this. these types of transparencies. These will stick just fine. And you'll note that the upper part above the windscreen, where this material would struggle, is done in such a way that it sh should be able to cope its cut out look. So there's your pre cut mask set. And then we have a decal sheets. Print deco graph printed in the Ukraine. Nothing wrong with these again, I've used them in other kits. We have a main markings set up here. Um, and these are great. Just look at these look at these arts. <laughs> Big green eyes, flowers, witches, some kind of fishes. Um a bird that looks halfway between a seabird and an eagle and we've got some teeth as well all the crosses and all the numbers and then a separate sheet has got all of our stencils instrument panel some other bits for the inside by the looks of it they're quite matte in appearance but they're very thin we've got nice feathered um, carrier film edges so the the newer Edward decals that are catching a lot of flack lately have these lovely feathered edges to the carrier film so despite the fact that you could peel the carrier film off you don't really need to because the tapered edge allows the decals almost to disappear and these are so thin that I can barely feel them on the sheet so 
I have used these on other models. Um, as I say, other Ukrainian manufacturers use use these deco manufacturers and they're perfectly decent so I'm not too worried about that at all. So lastly let's look at our instructions. Simple paper A4 folded instruction sheet. So we have a reproduction of the box out there with a bit of history and some instructions at the bottom, cautions about using nippers and fire and glue and stuff and not feeding the plastic bags to your children once you open it up it's not folded I lied it's stapled there's your parts diagrams there can't quite get the whole page in can I and then we go straight into building the internal areas there's a bit of a use of shading there which allows for a little more clarity sometimes than just the drawn instructions only but there's nothing terrifically complicated here it would seem that the Swiss preferred the spade grip because we have a spade grip style control column going in here which I don't think is standard on the 109 I think, I think the other kind is what they normally have we trap all of that in between those big uh, side walls to the front and rear bulkheads then we're going to make up a propeller and this sort of um, oil cooler radiator type affair undercarriage put the fuselage together so we're putting a representation of the top of the engine block in and this is purely so that you can see something through the vents in the nose part rather than just a space And we attach the instrument panel to that, that upper panel by the looks of it. Wing goes together with minimal first two parts for each wheel well, and then the wing sticks together with separate wing tips. And then in the middle of all of that, <laughs> we've got the stencil diagram. It says please check your references for propeller markings, they could be different than shown. But that's all your standard stencil locations shown now and it's rather attractively shaded sort of CAD model looking artwork. You also have the colour call outs over here which are Mr Colour and Mr Hobby. So the black ones are the Mr Colour numbers and the transparent ones are the Mr Hobby numbers. Then we're back to getting on the building. So the completed cockpit tub just inserts into the bottom of the fuselage there and then we add the bottom plate on the nose and again we've got an internal part there just so that something is visible through those vents. There we're building up the headrest part for the canopy with those pieces of photo etch. And interestingly the radiator baths are made out of several separate parts as well, the fairings rather. So you've got side pieces going on here and then you add radiator faces front and rear, a bit of photo etch for that slat that goes through the middle and then the actual top of the fairings or the bottom last. Same deal for the under nose one as well. That's relatively complicated but should look quite convincing when done. And then we add the flaps and the undercarriage finally the canopy and aerials I think this headrest arm is going to be quite tricksy because that's going to have to be bent to the right shape and then constructed out of several pieces of photo etch and a plastic part all without snapping off these tiny arms <laughs> a part of the, part of it if you're anything like me you'll bend it the wrong way at least twice before you bend it the right way <laughs> you end up breaking it and losing those parts forever and at the back then we have an advert for some of the other versions some of the other boxings they do an E1 boxing an E3 boxing there and an E4 and an E7 and I suppose one of the biggest draws for this particular one certainly for me is these paint schemes so we've got this A3 fold out full colour glossy sheet here to detail these schemes 
Uh, I don't know anything about Swiss 109s or the Swiss Air Force in general, except they seem to like these very, very colourful schemes around the time of the war, presumably to aid in not being shot at by anybody. Um, so I won't try and go into too much detail with any of this because I simply don't know. Uh, they're calling out the green as RLM 70 on these two with 65 undersides and then you've got these fabulous red and white stripes all over the place just don't they look brilliant two different ones here J311, J371 1944 and an overleaf we have a bunch of slightly less colourful ones but they're all colourful in their own ways so these are all just that dark green over 65 but they've all got various different nose arts. This one has got those big happy green eyes with the teeth. This one has the white flowers. This one has yellow and white flowers. This has the big red and white fish on it. The witch and the, and the eagle seagull. And these all still have a lot of red on them. They've got big red bands, red, red rudders and the big white crosses on them. So they're actually pretty attractive in their own right I think I, I do like the happy shark there you go that's your option one two three four five six seven eight different standalone schemes all with different J numbers excellent I've got no idea which one which one to do here none I, I, I love this super stripey ones but I also really like the, the artwork on these. And then again, I think virtually every 109 I've built so far has got a white nose. So I don't know. We'll see. But I would like to build this one re relatively soon because it, it's just so interesting to me compared to pretty much any other 109 kit that I'm ever likely to build. So it, this compares to me with the... I have the Mersu boxing of the Edward G model, which is the Finnish Air Force, and some of those are quite out there as well with the scheme. Um, so there you go. The Wingsy 148th scale 109E3. Absolutely beautiful looking kit. As I say, it looks incredibly similar to the sort of thing that we've been seeing from Edward over the last few years. It's a similar price point as well. But you do get everything you need in the box, as you've just seen. I think you can forgive any Ukrainian manufacturer for not being the cheapest at the moment. Um, and if if we can't support the Ukraine in any other way, maybe we can do it by buying things like this. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful. As I say, I will look to bring you a build of this relatively soon. In amongst the um, Blackbird and the Spitfire builds that are ongoing. Thanks again, as ever, to Andy Hills for sorting me out with this one. He does have some more in stock at the shop, so give him a bell if you'd like to pick one of these up from him. Um, or look online. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been useful to you. And thanks, as ever, to all of those who support me via the Buy Me A Coffee app, which is linked below as usual. And so with all of that said, it only remains for me to say, look after yourselves, look after each other, and Genesis out.